Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint and today we're going to be building the ultimate small room gaming setup. And I'll show you how we're taking a 1.4 meter wide room from looking like this to this. Now I've shared quite a few of my setups over the years, but the purpose of today's video is to show you how you're able to create an awesome gaming setup in the smallest of spaces. So hopefully today's video will give you some ideas or inspiration for your own setup. And you never know, if this video does well, maybe I'll turn this into a series and do yours next. Either way, everything I cover is linked down below along with any discount codes that I found. Right, so here's some of the gear that I'll be taking with me today, and the rest is going to be sent direct to his house. Now I live in York, and Brad, whose setup we're building today, lives down in Bristol, which is about 250 miles away. I kind of knew this was going to take more than just a few hours to build, so I booked to stay down there for a couple of days just to make sure we'd get it all done. And the good news is, we did, and it turned out really well. So I've got to show you how this room looked before the work was started, and it's actually a downstairs cupboard which measures 1.4 meters by 1.7 meters, and it was already being used with a desk, a gaming chair, and an old TV, and this was all hooked up to a PlayStation 4. For a cupboard, it's a great size, but let's be honest, it wasn't the most inspiring places to sit and play, and that's why I think this is going to be an awesome transformation. Now fortunately for me, in between shooting this content and turning up to build the setup, Brad completely stripped out, replastered, boxed in all of the pipework, and he even went ahead and added some wood panelling to the wall, then finished it off by painting the walls in a nice flat grey, and added some grey carpet. And it meant that on the day of the build, we had a really good start with a nice clean and fresh room, pretty much something that I would want in my own house. So the first thing that we needed was a desk, and I went for the FlexiSpot E7 as I've personally used one of these in my old setups. I chose to go with black as I think the all black would add a nice contrast against the grey walls. Building it only took about 30 minutes as you just need to slot the frame together, drop the legs in and attach the feet. Then we needed to fit the all black tabletop, which is a case of lining up the frame to the holes and screwing it in. Then all of the cables need to be plugged in to power it, which can then be hidden inside of this metal tray which comes with the desk. And that's it, the desk is built. Now if you've seen any of my previous setups, you'll know that cable management plays a huge part of the build. I'll always try to hide as many cables as I can, so I've got a pack of these plastic clips that'll allow us to keep those cables out of sight. I'll use these pretty much everywhere that I see a loose cable. Now before flipping the desk up, I wanted to add some RGB to the setup, so I decided to go with Govis Neon Rope Lights. These come with these clips that you stick to the desk and then you slot the LEDs in to keep them in place. And then here's how it looks right now, and this is going to look awesome when finished. And then here is a glimpse at some of the items we're going to be adding to the desk today. But let's just go ahead and get these installed, and then I'll talk you through each one. And here it is. This has turned out to be so much better than I could have imagined. I was actually worried at first thinking the space would look a little too cramped and overfilled. But nope, the space has been fully optimised and this looks like a really nice place to game. So the desk itself is from FlexiSpot, as mentioned this is the E7, and it's a standing desk, which not only means you can use it either sitting or standing, but you can adjust the height to exactly how you need it. So on the left hand side it comes with a control panel that you can press and hold the arrows to adjust it, or you can program the numbers to two heights. I've set number one for sitting and number two for standing. As for the size, well this desk measures 120cm by 60cm, bearing in mind the room is only 140cm wide, or 130cm if you exclude the wooden shelf, so it fits pretty snug in here. Next up is the monitor. This is ROG's 27 inch OLED gaming monitor, the PG27AQDM. It's a 27 inch 1440p 240hz screen, and it looks so good, just look how thin this is. I actually reviewed this monitor a few months ago on the channel, and it is a brilliant screen. Around the back it's got these cool LEDs, which we'll never see, but it also has a custom heatsink built in so it gets brighter than the LG equivalent, and it goes to around 1200 nits. Colours are good, response time is crazy good, and the black levels are as you would expect from an OLED, perfect in a dark room. I nearly opted for a 32 inch in here, but seeing it now in the setup, I think the 27 inch option was the right decision. And playing games like Call of Duty, you really cannot beat this monitor for its size and its specs. Now it obviously comes with its own stand in the box, but I've actually decided to mount it to an arm instead. Now the reason I've done this is we are pretty limited on space already, so lifting it off the desk will give us a little more space for other things. Plus it means we can move it around and position it exactly how we want it. On top of that, I always think monitors look awesome when they're on an arm. Okay, so on the left here we have the PlayStation 5. 
And coming from a PlayStation 4, this is already a massive step up. Not only for performance and load times, but the noise levels. This thing will run so much quieter in here now. In theory, a PS5 Slim would take up less space, but this fills the area quite well. And to keep with the whole dark theme, I've added some black console covers, which gives it a nice stealthy look. It means it blends into the setup rather than standing out with the default white plates. Now, as the PS5 only comes with 825 gigabytes of storage, I've also added a one terabyte NVMe SSD. So this adds more internal storage without having an external SSD hanging out the back. Plus he can install and run PS5 games straight from the new internal SSD. So when it comes to building any new setup, whether it's for productivity or gaming, you're always gonna need that one more USB port, you know, for charging or hooking up those SSDs. Well, that's where these Ugreen docking stations come in handy. The first one is the Revo Dock Max. This is a 13 in one docking station that gives us all of the ports we could possibly need including not just one, but two Thunderbolt 4 ports. This is ideal for using with monitors up to 8K, as well as high-speed SSDs. There's also four USB-C ports, two USB-A ports, SD card readers, a 3.5mm headphone jack, and an Ethernet port. Not only that, but it also offers 90 watt fast charging for powering and charging a laptop, and can support up to three 4K displays at the same time. Of course, if you didn't need or want something this big, They've got a smaller and more portable option, which is this, the Revo Dock Pro. This simply plugs into your laptop and gives you 13 ports, including two HDMI ports, a display port, USB-C, four USB-A ports, a gigabit Ethernet port, 3.5mm headphone jack, and an SD card reader. It also gives us a 100 watt power delivery and up to 10 gigabytes per second transfer speed. It's also pretty small, so ideal for using with a laptop or keeping in your bag while you're away. So yeah, if you wanted to add more ports to your setup, I have linked to both of these below. Now, as this monitor doesn't have speakers built in and you kind of need a decent headset for playing online anyway, I've gone for a set of SteelSeries Nova Pros. They do these in wired and wireless, but the wired are slightly cheaper and offer better sound and mic quality. Now, what I like about the Nova Pros are the leather air ear cups, which are super comfy, as well as the fact that they rotate. So if you took them off and placed them around your neck or on your desk, they would sit flat instead. They've also got a retractable mic and a nice steel headband on the top. But the biggest and the best feature of these is the DAC, this little box under the monitor. You can not only change your in-game volume or mute and unmute yourself, but it gives you full EQ control for your audio. You can dial in your own equalizer settings or use the default presets. Now, before I picked up the Astro A50X for my own setup, I used the wireless version of these and I had no complaints about them at all. And when these are not in use, they sit on this Spigen headset stand in the corner. So you might have noticed this already, but we're not using a standard PS5 DualSense controller. I've actually gone ahead and gifted one of my scuff controllers instead. This is the dark grey with black buttons that I built last year. But I thought it would look so much better than the white controller in the setup. Now, you've probably heard of Scuff by now, but I've been using their controllers for years, and I don't think I could ever go back to using a normal controller for games like Call of Duty. Remapping buttons to the rear paddles and those instant triggers make such a difference. And if you were seriously interested in buying one of these for yourself, I do actually have a discount code below which will work across their website. And then this is sitting in one of these charging docks I found on Amazon. I would much rather have had the official PlayStation dock, but as that only comes in white, I had to find a black alternative instead. It lights up when charging and I think it looks pretty good. Now, one of the most striking items in this setup has got to be the chair. This is the Herman Miller Vantum in collaboration with the Logitech G. It's technically their newest and cheapest chair, but it's still £900. Now, it was a tough decision whether to go for all black or black and white. But again, seeing it all come together in the room, I think the white was definitely the right choice. Now, what I like about the Vantum is it looks like a gaming chair, but it also still looks premium. It's got a really nice design along with the Herman Miller branding throughout, as well as a nice pop of red. It's still got all of the usual adjustments you would expect from a chair, as well as a headrest, but it has that presence that not a lot of other chairs will give you. Then underneath the chair, the room is obviously carpeted, and that not only helps with the sound, but it kind of keeps it looking cosy as well but it does mean the chair could struggle to move in and out. So I decided to add one of these heavy duty floor mats. I've got two of these in my own setup at home and they are without doubt the best floor mats I've ever used. They don't flex and they come as one solid piece so there's no creases or ripples and you don't need to iron it out. Okay, so on the wall here, we've got one of my favorite pieces and one that I wish I had in my own setup. This is from a company called Frame a Game where they take discs, cases and steelbooks and mount them in a frame to create this awesome piece of art. 
For Brad's setup, I've gone with Modern Warfare 2, as let's face it, it's one of the best Call of Duty games ever made, and this steel book looks so good as well. And what I like about it is it's gaming art without looking cheap or tacky, so it would look good in any room and any setup. I then had a look through their site and ended up ordering a GTA Vice City for my own setup. Now I just need to find a wall to put it on. And the good news is, after I spoke to them, they've actually given me a discount code that I can give to you. So if you want to go ahead and order anything through their website, use my code below and you will get 10% off. And if you do order anything, let me know in the comments. Oh, and above the setup, he's added a shelf where he'll be storing all of his snapbacks and hats. Each one has a personal meaning to him depending on where he's been. So that's a pretty cool idea. Although I do think he should have gone for 19 inches of venom. Next, we have got to talk about the lighting in here. Most of today's video has been bright and airy, which is good going for the size of the room but it also needs good lighting for that proper gaming vibe. So we've got the seeding lights, which gives us the bright daytime lighting, but then this is how it looks at night. And this is only done with two lights. So we've got the Govi neon ropes that we fitted to the back of the desk, and we've got these as well. This is Govi's glide hexagon light panels. So you get 10 of these plastic hexagons in the box, which you simply line up and create any pattern you'd like on your wall. And this is how they look when they're off, and then boom, this is how they look when they're switched on. And the good news is both of these lights can be controlled in the app or synced up to your Alexa or Google speakers. But this lighting has completely transformed the room into a proper gaming setup. Sure, the flashing lights might be distracting while you play, so you could just set them to a static color instead. In fact, I think the red theme really suits this room. It ties in with the ROG branding on the monitor and the red details of the chair. Okay, so after a full day of building and filming, this is what we're left with. Imagine opening this door to what you thought was a cupboard and seeing this setup. I mean, who wouldn't want a gaming setup like this in their bedroom or in the corner of their living room? I don't think many of us will have a cupboard this big, but if you do, just look what you could do with the space. As long as you can fit a desk in, you could literally replicate something like this. Honestly, this is a setup that I would be proud to call my own, and I know Brad is really happy with it. And what's great is there's still room for adding more stuff to the walls, and this will probably evolve over time. So there you have it, this is my first setup build on the channel for somebody else. What do you think? I honestly had so much fun making this video and it would be awesome to make more videos like this in 2024. So let me know down below if you think this would be a great series for the channel. Now drop a nice gaming setup in the comments and I'll give you a thumbs up for staying right till the end. And if you did enjoy today's video, check out ROG's latest gaming monitor video next, as I review the 32 inch 4K OLED in my setup. Well, thanks for watching. Please like, sub, and follow me everywhere. Until next time.